Did we expect too much from the RTX 50 series? Every time a new GPU lineup drops, the hype is unreal. More power, better ray tracing, and more AI-driven features. But sometimes, the reality doesn't match the expectation. Alright, so let's cut through the hype. At 1080p, the answer is pretty clear, no real difference. The RTX 5090 pulls 204 FPS across 17 games, while the 4090 trails just slightly at 202 FPS. Even the 1% 1 low, 153 FPS on both. That's basically the same experience. Here's where things get interesting though. We are looking at high-end graphics card with GPUs and CPUs that are really powerful. But when we play at 1080p, the CPU becomes the real limiting factor. The GPU, despite being super powerful, isn't pushed hard enough at this resolution. It's the same reason, you don't see massive FPS gains between these cards in 1080p gaming. In other words, the bottleneck isn't the GPU, it's the CPU trying to keep up. But when you switch to 4K, the story changes. At this resolution, it's GPU that's fully engaged. The RTX 5090 averaged 137 FPS with 106 FPS 1% lows, showing a 27% improvement over the 4090's 108 FPS and 87 FPS 1% lows. That boost in 4K is noticeable, especially when it comes to the smoothness of the gameplay and stability during intense scenes. The 5090 laptop GPU comes with 10,948 CUDA cores, a solid jump from the 9,070 28 cores in the RTX 4090. That's a 12.5% increase in core count, which suggests that there's some more potential power in the 5090. But it's not just about raw power, it's about how well that power is utilized. CUDA cores are essentially the parallel processors that handle computations for rendering and gaming tasks. More cores means more ability to handle simultaneous calculations, but the real-world impact on gaming performance depends on how well the GPU is optimized to leverage those cores. It's still limited by the laptop form factor. We have seen this with every previous generation. Even though the desktop 5090 is a beast, the laptop variant comes with power limitations that prevent it from reaching its full potential. Now, when it comes to the gaming performance, the real gain shows up at 4K, but at 1440p and 1080p, you won't notice much of a difference. The 5090 offers better ray tracing cores, which directly improves performance in these heavy workloads. You will notice that the DLSS 4.0 plays a huge role here. This new AI-powered frame generation technique improves performance by generating intermediate frames between actual ones, effectively boosting frame rates without a drop in visual quality. Take a demanding title like the Cyberpunk 2077 on Ultra settings. Here, you can see the difference between the RTX 5090 and its predecessor. The 5090 pushed the games to over 100 FPS at 4K, while the 4090 struggles to maintain the same stability with occasional dips in performance. This is what sets the 5090 apart in terms of real-world gaming experiences. So, is the 5090 worth the premium? It's definitely a better option if you're gaming at 4K, but if you're stuck with 1080p or 1440p, you might want to reconsider. In terms of overall architecture, the 5090 is a bit more effective thanks to its use of newer GDDR7 memory, which allows faster data transfer rates compared to the GDDR6 memory in the 4090. This means better bandwidth and performance per watt, which helps with the increased power demands while keeping things cool. However, both GPUs still use the same 256-bit memory bus, meaning the actual bandwidth hasn't improved drastically. While the 5090's GDDR7 is more efficient, memory bottlenecks can still occur in situations where the GPU has to handle vast amounts of data, such as with large textures in modern open-world games. If you are upgrading from a 4080 laptop, the 5080 won't blow your socks off, but it will still bring some noticeable improvements. The 5080 is essentially an incremental update over the 4080. You are looking at better efficiency and slightly better performance, but the difference in actual gameplay experience isn't as noticeable as it between the 4090 and the 5090. For gamers upgrading from a 4080, the 5080 will feel more like a mild upgrade rather than a giant leap, but that's typical with laptop GPUs. They have to balance performance with power efficiency, no matter how powerful a GPU is on paper, power limits are real bottleneck. Laptops have to play within tight power and thermal limits. But laptops typically max out at 175 watt, which limits the overall performance. Cooling systems are also limited by the form factor of a laptop. There is simply less room for heat dissipation. That's why we have seen gaming laptops that can't quite match their desktop counterparts in terms of raw performance. That's why the MSI's Titan 18 and Asus ROG Strix SCAR both have a max power limit of 175 watt, even though they house these powerful GPUs. While you can expect better performance than what we saw in the past, it's still not on par with the desktop level performance. So yeah, raw specs are great, but in a laptop, power efficiency is everything. No matter how many CUDA cores you have, if you can't feed them enough power, they are just sitting there, doing nothing. Power efficiency is critical. It's not just about the power draw of the GPUs, but how well the system can manage that power. 
The 5090's laptop GPU benefits from being built on a 4 nanometer process, which should result in better thermal management. But when it comes to the laptop, power efficiency isn't just about delivering maximum power. It's about balancing that with the heat output and the battery life. This is why gaming laptops with RTX 5090 GPUs still suffer from relatively short battery life under heavy load. When you are pushing the GPU to its limits, the battery can drain quickly. Take a look at the MSI Titan 18HX. It's one of the most powerful laptops you can buy right now. But it's also a massive bulk device that can't really be used on the go for extended periods. It's the same with other top-end laptops. They are powerful but only as long as they are plugged in. So while the 5090 does offer better thermal efficiency, don't expect a massive leap when it comes to the gaming battery life. The truth is, these laptops are still going to need a massive power brick if you want to keep up with the performance they are throwing down. So here's the deal. The 5090 is a piece. But the performance upgrade we were hoping is not there. So while the 5090 is impressive, if you are already rocking a 1490 or 1480 laptop, the performance gap isn't drastic enough to justify the premium. Bottom line, if you are after top tier gaming, it's a solid upgrade. But for most, previous generation still has plenty to offer. So that's it for our take on the 5090. If you are gaming at 4K or doing demanding stuff that requires max settings, this is where the real magic happens. But if you are not pushing your system to the limits, then the 1490 still holds up pretty well. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future tech insights. Drop a comment and let me know, are you ready to push the boundaries of your budget and get the 1590 or you are sticking with your current setup? Thanks for watching and as always, keep vibing. I'll meet you in the next one.